Take one. You've probably heard of Seattle before. Not the city, which is also nice. The coffee company, which was started in, oh, in London. This is the history of that company. The first Seattle store in South Africa opened its doors in 1997. It's the one in Cavendish, but it looked like this back then. It was literally a square inside a square. But we'll get back to that. These are the guys who brought Seattle to South Africa, Pete and Barry, or as Pete likes to call him, Bez, Bez, Bez. Bez. <laughs> <laughs> They've been friends since they were kids and always wanted to start something big, big together. together. They just don't know what. And uh, it wasn't actually going to be Seattle Coffee Company. That would be two locals from Seattle, Scott, Scott and Eddie Svensson. Hi, everybody. Who moved from Seattle to London in 1993 and missed the Seattle City coffee culture so much that they actually decided to start their own. Who was also in London at that time? It was Pete. He moved to London after studying. To get some work experience. And while searching for that something big thing, he came across uh, an ad. For Seattle Coffee Company. <laughs> which read, Are you passionate about coffee? He applies for the job and ends up working alongside the founders. Meanwhile, Meanwhile Barry is off selling chicken for now. When he gets a call from Pete about the whole starting something big thing, and they both realize, This is what we've been looking for. Together they decide to chat to Scott about bringing Seattle back to South Africa. Scott's not convinced at first. I mean, they are 23 at the time. But that's when Fred Withers from Exclusive Books comes along. He's looking for a coffee concept to go inside his stores when... He was walking in London, he saw Seattle Coffee Company, which led him to Scott and Alley, which then led him to us, which then led us back to Scott and Alley. Cut a long story short, they got, got the rights. The first Seattle store in South Africa officially opened its doors in 1997. It was the first of its kind. The first counter service coffee, the first to ban smoking, which was massive at the time. Well? The first to steam more precisely, according to the customer's request. And the first to custom make coffees for customers. So we've been at it for about four months and we get a call from Scott and Alley to tell us that they're selling out the whole business to s All the Seattles were going to be converted into s and Pete and Barry were going to have to go things alone. There was a time during the early 2000s when they really weren't doing their best. The company was scaling, they were fighting franchisees and desperately looking for a cash inflow to allow them to redevelop the business. Something needed to change. They realized it was time to stop bringing roasted beans all the way over from London and partner with their roasters, Union, Hello. in bringing them back to South Africa so the beans could be roasted right over here. And that's what they did. They also sold some shares in Seattle and reinvested that money straight back into developing the business. It came down to fresh coffee, training, and coming up with a new look and feel for the stores. The day they revamped and reopened the store in Cavendish, sales grew by 30%. They also partnered with Fresh Stop at Caltex, and then later on with Food Lovers, who bought a good amount of shares in Seattle. I mean, you're making it sound quite simple. It was actually quite a complicated process. So I guess the key was taking what the smaller guys were doing and scaling that, which is actually a pretty difficult thing to do. It has been and always will be about the way you like it. We've really stuck to that. But, but it's also about opening an average of 10 stores per year since they started in 1997 and having over 1,500 well-trained baristas and selling a Seattle coffee, well, every two and a half seconds, like now. And now. And now. <laughs>